Uh, we're calling the meeting to order at 6.01. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, any additions, deletions to the agenda? Okay, hearing none. Uh, correspondence, I have not received any. None. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep going then. Uh, members of the public, I see uh, Crystal is here. Um, and... Let's see, um, that's just Crystal. Thank you, Crystal, for coming. Okay, um, I guess old business then, uh, article of review for warning. Okay, so uh, Abby and Russ have it in front of them. And Abby, if you can just include them as addendums to the minutes. Um, so when we talk, whatever we talk about, just talks about the, the two warnings, but I'll just explain that the warnings are exactly the same. There are seven articles. Um, they are the same uh, articles that Wyndham puts on their warning to elect a moderator, accept the town report, school district director three-year term, compensate school director 750, then the budget article, which I'll come back to, which is five, and then shall the voters of Wyndham School District authorize the moving of operational surplus, if any, from FY 2023 to capital reserve fund. We talked about this at the last meeting. It's good practice so that that money always goes into a capital reserve fund that the board can then decide how to use. And then to tra transact any other business that may legally come before this meeting. And then what I'll need is uh, Mickey has printed them out. And I'll ask him to put them at the town office um, after approval, um, assuming you guys approve this, uh, you'll just need to go up and sign it um, because you will have voted tonight to approve this warning. Does that all make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. And then the only difference with Article 5, and I know Abigail and uh, Russ have it in front of them, but just for your knowledge, Beth, uh, what the legislature has passed and is waiting on the governor's signature is the current statutory language mm -hmm. um, has two sentences. One sentence is, shall the voters of Wyndham School District approve the school board to expend 453369 which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. That's the first sentence that does not change. Mm -hmm. The second sentence is what is it currently in statute and what uh, the governor will decide if he's going to veto, pass over or vote for is the second sentence, which would not be required if he does not veto which adds, it is estimated that the proposed budget is approved, will result in education spending of 18,805 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 5.9% more than spending for the current year. Mm -hmm. So it's just eliminating that second sentence. Uh, yeah. Which is, yeah so the one I send you says less. Less. Which one? Article so five? Yeah, when I when I sent it back to you in my email, I changed that word to less. Uh, under 5.9%? Yes, it is under what it was last year because they this is with the applied fund balance. Okay, then I'll need an amendment to, we'll call it version, current statute version, okay? So I will need a motion that in article five, the word more is changed to less. So moved. Can I get a second? Hey, how about second some discussion? It? Yeah, I was just gonna get the second and then yes. I'll second it. Thank you. Okay, any discussion? Well, if I take the $453,669 and divide it by the 19.4 students, I come up with 23,000. Three hundred and sixty-nine dollars, not eighteen thousand eight hundred five. So I'd like to know how someone arrived at eighteen thousand eight hundred five. All right, hold on. Maybe I'm. Oh, because you're not subtracting the um, offsetting revenues, Russ, and that's where you you added thirty thousand dollars. So the offsetting revenues are ninety thousand eight hundred. 
making education spending, which is what your um, equalized pupils are divided by, 362,569. However, that's not what the voters vote on. They vote on the expenditures. That's why I'm looking at the 453, 369 and saying if I take the 19.4 students, that means we're spending $23,369 per students, which is deceiving the voters of Wyndham from the true cost of what it's costing to educate the kids. Well, that's one of the reasons they want to take that second sentence out, because it works both ways. That it's mean on version two? On the current statute, it has the two sentence on Article 5. That's what mm -hmm. you guys are both discussing right now. Right. right. So the estimated, it's estimated that the proposed budget, if approved, et cetera, et cetera, is what will be deleted or added. Deleted. If the governor doesn't veto it. Deleted. Deleted. The second sentence is deleted. So all it will say is, is do the voters approve the $453,000 of expenses that is used to run the school, right? Okay. But what the equalized pupil or what the per pupil cost is based on is education spending. And for that, you have to subtract those offsetting revenues of which Wyndham voted to add $30,000 of fund balance to. So that's why it's 5.9% less than it was last year. But in reality, if we didn't have a surplus, we're spending $23,369 per student. That's no. what the costing to educate those kids. Well, technically, yes, but that's not how the formula works, right? The funding formula works on the year, the education spending. I understand that, but what I'm, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a deception of the true cost of educating the kids in Wyndham. And this has happened for years. For years, we have had more, we've had students attending the school that have been counted as average daily membership or weren't really residents of Wyndham. They were residents of Chester or Jamaica. And over the long period of time, the voters of Wyndham have been deceived in what the true cost is of educating Wyndham's kids because of manipulation of student population. And I'm getting tired of it. Well, I can tell you that, the, um, that I gave the summary sheet, which lays it all out um, pretty clearly. Um, it lays it all out. I gave that to the auditors. Um, so hopefully that will get into the annual report. Well, the auditors have missed a lot of the fuel oil costs from the school bus. I've been keeping track of the pay orders and other stuff and what the actual school bus usage is of gallonage. And it's, it's lower than what it actually is. So someone in the financial side of it, and I'm not saying it's you, Lori, are not billing all the true costs of the school um, from the town's cost to the school. And I'm getting sick of this deception. Okay. Um, so what needs, um, first of all, I'm not sure what students are you talking about from Jamaica and Chester? Are you talking about the one year where we had? No, what I'm talking about is that there are, there are not, when you look at the pay orders, Beth, and you look at the fuel usage, and you look at the calculation that Lori had done as to how many miles it is to the school, it, it just isn't, it isn't adding up. Somewhere along the line, someone is not billing the school, the WCSU for the, for the gallons of, of diesel fuel that's used in the school bus. Okay. And there's a record that's kept at the tank up at the town office, and I have made photocopies of it for several months. And it's never showed up as the bills going into the pay orders is being school bus fuel. And I just wonder what's going on. Yeah, my, my question was your reference to us taking in Chester and Jamaica students. That, that was where I was confused. Well, there are people that lived in Jamaica that were brought up or that, that lived in Chester were brought up to the school by the principal for many years. They were not residents of Wyndham. And even though they claimed to have wanted to live here, they can only they could vote here, but they can't bring their school, their kids here to school. And one of those one of those 
And two of those kids lived in Jamaica and came to our school without paying tuition because they were a relative of a teacher. So we've been deceived over a number of years as to what the true cost of educating our kids are by having other kids show up and count it as average daily membership when they shouldn't really be here. Okay, well, but that's not happening now. So I'm sorry, well, Abby. It's happened I in the your... past, Beth. It's I happened know, but in the we're... past and it's not right. I understand that, Russ, but you're holding on to old stuff. We're moving forward. Abby, I see you. Go ahead, Abby. Thank you. So, um, and... I hear you, your concern, Russ, I do. And I'm just trying to kind of figure out where, um, where this is falling into with what your question is for Lori. So what is, the, what is it, Russ, that is seeming mis, misleading to the voters currently with these articles? What is it specifically that you're looking at? Because I'm not sure I'm understanding, I'm sorry. Paragraph number five and version number, we'll call it B, states that the average cost of educating the kids is 18805 uh, 18, That's not true. The cost of educating the kids is $23,369. That's a deception that's perpetrated by the way the language is written in that, so, in that motion. So if okay, they read so this, with- they're gonna, if they read this, they're gonna think they're only spending $18,805 where in reality, they're spending $23,369 per student. So Lori- That's the, actual, on, that's the cost of educating the kids. Okay, so Lori, can you maybe explain to me where that difference is and what those numbers mean with Ross, Ross is explaining? Sure, um, so it, he's using the total expenditure number. Okay. And what belongs on this article is the education spending cost per pupil. So in order to get to that, you have to, um, so what does the ed fund, what is it going to pay Wyndham School District to educate the kids, right? So it's going to pay the expense, the total expenses less any revenue that you might have coming in, i.e. the $11,000 that West River pays you, the state transportation fund pays Wyndham, um, the $30,000 of surplus, all of those things, the Ed Fund doesn't need to pay you those, right? Because you're creating those revenues on your own. So the Ed Fund only has to pay the expenses minus the offsetting revenues, And that is divided by the equalized pupils. And then that is the cost per pupil. And that is what goes in here. Russ is correct. It's and is why that there was this big push to have that second sentence striked from this article because it works both ways. If you're not using fund balance, this could be, and and the yield was low, this could be a very high number, a very high percentage, um, which it has been in the past, if you look back at warnings for Wyndham, um, and which isn't necessarily true because your, your students might've been low one year, right? Or so, so that's why they wanna strike it. But that is the, what Russ is saying is correct. It does cost, you know, a lot of money. <laughs> Obviously, $23,369. Right. But that's not what goes in this article. And that's not what the Ed Fund is paying you. So is that is that number, and I'm not trying to open up a can of worms here, but is that number increased specifically because of the CLA? No, CLA nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with the CLA. Thank goodness. Because that's its own nightmare. That is a high number. That's this is just the cost per pupil and what the Ed Fund is going to pay to educate the students in window. And that has so, to be minus the offsetting revenues. Abby, can, so, I, real, can I real quick ask yes. a question? Just, and this, this is not just Wyndham. This is, this is the governor's making this decision. This is throughout the state, yes? That is correct. The governor is making the decision um, to sign the bill, not sign the law, and it just goes into effect or veto it. And so I just want to clarify that because this is not Wyndham. I need I need for all of us. This is not Wyndham trying to be um, devious or 
um, you know, shady. So I, I really hope that that's not what we're throwing around. We need to stick with this is what's going through the whole state. And we're all waiting for the governor. So, Abby, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, you're good. And that's why I just, you know, in in with the report that's going into the town report, I'm wondering if how much more transparency we can have with the voters explaining, depending on what happens, right, with what the governor decides, people need to know that. They need to be having those conversations because, again, if it's out of our control, they need to be making it louder to the people who it is in control of. Um, so I'm, that's that's what I'm just trying to figure out. So getting back to what our articles are and where we're at. So for that language, for the second, for the second um, option, that is all depending on uh, what the amended from equal to less, right? Is that what the... Uh, yeah, from more to less, more, which yeah. you guys yeah, still have to have a second and vote on that. Uh, I, Russ seconded it. And so, all right, are we ready then to call that? What? No, Sorry. your amendment. You have to, this is an amendment because it says more and we need it to say less. I thought that's, yeah, we just, I've, so we had our discussion, right? We just had okay. a discussion. Sorry. I moved it. Russ seconded it. We've had the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any all those opposed say nay. Okay. So, all okay, right. Bill. Now, um, if you could then take, we'll stay with that warning, the long warning, the one that you just amended. Mm -hmm. I'm going to refer to that as current statute warning. Okay. That is the current statute warning. I need somebody to make a motion to approve the current statute warning to be used if necessary so moved i'll second any discussion okay hearing none all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. okay and then the next motion i need is a motion for the new statutory language if approved warning so moved I'll second any discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. I will correct the more to less. I will send master copies uh, to Mickey to print and bring to the town offices for you all to sign. Dynamite. Okay. Um, when does that need to be signed by? Uh, you can do it tomorrow. Is there another date? <laughs> oh, you can do it anytime between uh, 30 and 40 days between March 7th. So you're fine. Okay. You just so, sign it and give it to the auditors. Exactly, Russ. Yep. Okay. And make, yeah, you may want to wait till the end of the week. I don't know. I mean, you can sign it whenever, but he's supposed to make a decision. So I would I wait don't... till Friday because he's going to just we'll know on Thursday and then I can give the clean copies to Mickey and email all of you and tell okay. you where it resides. All right. So oh. sign Friday at the town office dynamite. And then can we make sure that that's uh, on our agenda to do like at least to be able to discuss and let people know more about if they have questions and depending on how things fall out, we may have to have some chats about what that is. Yes, yeah. Larry. So the perfect opportunity to have some chats about that is probably in your budget meeting um, that's pre-town meeting. So you're required to have a, a budget review, a public meeting about the, the budget that was passed and what you're putting forth. So that's probably a good time to have these conversations. And hopefully you will have a lot of people from the public um, viewing that so that they understand you know, what, what's being said. And it can be recorded and it can be shared. Right. And is, is that this meeting you have here? You have February 28th, 2023 budget informational meeting. Is that? That is the meeting. Dynamite. All that right. Is, yes. And Lori, will you be there? Um, yeah, no. I believe. Uh, why is it a Saturday? <laughs> um, the, the, the Tuesday town meeting, you won't be there. No, but I'll be there on the February 28th meeting. Oh, okay, right. Which is the budget informational meeting. I'm right. 
I'm happy to be there and answer questions. So I believe, explain. yes, that is a Tuesday. So then we will still have our regular board meeting then a week prior to that. Or you could do them both together. Dynamite. If everybody, how does everybody feel about that? Let's just do them both together. Keep it simple. Because the 21st is vacation. So you guys had already pre-thought this out to make Fantastic. sure that you do it on the 28th. Fantastic. Okay, great. Uh, anything else? Where do I send the minutes? Who, who gets these? Uh, if you could, you can just send them to me and Meg. That's the best. Meg. Uh, M right. M W R I G H T at windhamcentral.org. Okay. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Abby. Thank you. All right. We're good. We're All good. Right. Uh, motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Joining at 622. Thank you.